Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Your dissection today, then, will be of the neurologic supply of the mid-face. The mid-face or region is supplied by nerves and blood vessels which emanate from a fossa which lies deep in this region. The fossa is approached laterally through the pterygomaxillary fissure and the fossa itself is referred to as the pterygopalatine fossa. The pterygopalatine fossa is best understood perhaps by looking at some of its posterior wall features and to do that we have made a slice through a skull. The lines that you see on this half skull are the lines of orientation by which we have made this slice. Here is such a slice, and for your orientation, here is the lateral pterygoid plate on the specimen slice. We have a lateral pterygoid plate in this region. Anteriorly to this slice, we can see the posterior aspect of the pterygomaxillary fissure here. The posterior aspect of this slice is located here, and superiorly then the temporal surface, temporal surface, infratemporal region, infratemporal region. Now, if we consider the posterior wall then of the pterygopalatine fossa, we'll be looking at the slice in this direction, and this is what we have. Here, we have the base of the orbit, we can see the superior orbital fissure in this position. If we look medially, we can see the optic canal. The area of interest then is in here. This is the pterygopalatine fossa. We can see entering the pterygopalatine fossa at this point, form in rotundum. It will transmit the maxillary nerve. At this point then, the nerve of the pterygoid canal will enter the fossa and then more medially and posteriorly a foramen which will pass backward the pharyngeal canal. These are the aspects then that leave the fossa or enter the fossa from its posterior aspect. Today's dissection is going to be oriented on a group which pass down from the fossa in this direction. They lie in the pterygopalatine canal and that's best shown on this fragment. Here in this midline section, we have a hard palate and the landmarks which you previously identified, the greater palatine foramen here, the sphenopalatine foramen here. I might remind you that medial then, or rather lateral to this foramen lies the pterygopalatine fossa. The opening for today's dissection then will be to pass a wire from the greater palatine foramen superiorly along the path of the canal, and you can see the wire lying then deep to the sphenopalatine foramen. Your assignment then will be to break away the bone which overlies this wire to expose the contents of the canal and then the contents of the fossa. Now let's consider the specimen. Here in the mid-sagittal view of our specimen, we can see some of the landmarks that we had at the end of our last dissection of this region. Here we have, of course, the hard palate. Here we have a portion of the cut wall of the medial aspect of the maxillary sinus, the sinus itself lying in here. And what we're going to do now is to reflect the mucosa as you did last time. And we can see then that the greater palatine foramen is here with a wire already extending into it. And your dissection then today will be to place a wire through the canal, as you can see it going up toward the sphenopalatine foramen in this region. We will be removing bone which overlies this wire in both this position and then exposing the fossa medio anteriorly in this region. Now we have done that in this next specimen, which we have right here. And we can see, again, the contents of this region. Here, for example, if we reflect the flap of the palate, we can see the palatine contents. Here's the greater palatine nerve associated with it, the descending palatine artery. 
you should remember that this area houses both arteries and nerves in this area. If we follow these contents superiorly, we pass then into the area of the pterygopalatine fossa. One of the things that you will recognize on this medial aspect is the cut end of the sphenopalatine artery that passed out in this area. We can then follow further forward to the maxillary nerve itself, which then progresses across the roof then of the maxillary sinus, which we see here, and is frequently in close association then with the maxillary artery, which is what you have in red here. This is the infraorbital branch of the maxillary artery. If we pass backward then into the fossa again, here we have the pterygopalatine ganglion itself. Passing out of it and inferiorly, we have the palatine nerves. Supplying it, if we look on its superior aspect, we can identify a nerve in this region. This is the nerve of the pterygoid canal. We have exposed that nerve within the canal by looking at the sphenoid sinus. This is the sinus in this region. Here then is the pituitary. And what we've done is to identify a ridge in the floor of that sinus, remove that bone covering the nerve itself to show that it does in fact lead to the ganglion. Passing posteriorly from the ganglion, we can identify the nerve of the pharyngeal canal here, associated with it then a small branch, an arterial branch of the maxillary artery, the artery of the pharyngeal canal. Now then, we'll look and notice that the area of the lateral nasal, or excuse me, lateral maxillary sinus wall has many nerves and arteries passing in it. These are important in that they make up the maxillary dental plexus. But to further understand that, you should pass and follow the path of the infraorbital nerve, which is located here. To do that, we can look at this superiorly from the orbital approach. Here, the eye is intact. We'll want to reflect the orbital contents and as you reflect the orbital contents to show the floor of the orbit, watch carefully on the lateral aspect because it is in that position that one of the somewhat difficult but important branches of the maxillary nerve passes, which we can see here very nicely. Here we have the lacrimal gland. If you remember, this gland is supplied from the pterygopalatine ganglion via the zygomatic nerve. Here we can see that nerve passing to the gland. It has previously passed in bone, and we can see it located here in bone, passing up to the level of the gland and then passing into it to supply the autonomic supply of that gland. Your orbital reflection then should be one merely of reflecting the orbital contents and removing them and following the path then of the infraorbital nerve, determining its branches specifically of the middle and anterior superior alveolar nerves as they come off within the orbit. But now let's consider their path within the maxillary sinus wall. This can be done on a specimen of this nature in which the teeth are missing, but perhaps it's better done on an additional specimen which we have here. For your orientation, we have removed the orbit the area of the infraorbital canal is here, and we're now going to look at, then, this lateral aspect. This happens to not only be a specimen with teeth, but it also is a male skull, so that you notice the extreme extent, then, of the maxillary sinus. It's a very large sinus, um, and it does extend, as you can look down in here and appreciate, down into the alveolar structure to come closely associated with the apices of the maxillary teeth. If we look at its lateral nasal wall, or lateral maxillary sinus wall, we can see many of the nerves traversing this region by transmitted light. If one were to hold this against the light, you can see many more of these features, but this shows it quite adequately for now. Here we can see the superior dental plexus. We can see a branch of the maxillary artery passing along this region in the lateral wall and coming forward. We can also identify by this method 
the roof here, or rather floor, of the infraorbital canal. A branch then of the infraorbital nerve which passes anteriorly is shown here in the anterior lateral wall and we can see it arching across the sinus passing into the lateral aspect of the nose and supplying then the teeth of this anterior maxillary region, the anterior superior alveolar nerve and dental plexus in this region. This then will complete your view of the neurovascular supply to the mid-face. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.